Okay, I'm Lucinda Bassett. I'm so glad that you're joining me. Um, I, I did some research, as I always do, to understand holiday heartbreak because I, I you know, I know that you've had it. Um, I know I've had it. And by the way, it's not always about relationships um, like partnerships, although um, statistically speaking, and I've got all this information from Yale and Harvard and all these other places, but statistically speaking, believe it or not, one of the most common times for a breakup is, what do you think, Christmas time. Um, and, and why? You so say, why is that? It's because, um, unfortunately, Thanksgiving and Christmas, this, this segment of time from Thanksgiving to New Year's, um, it brings up a lot of old memories for people. It brings up a lot of, if you're in a relationship with someone, uh, I would say a partnership, and you're not really happy, it kind of ignites what you're not happy about. And then there's that whole idea of, are we going to commit to each other this year? What do I need to get this person for a gift? Am I with the right person for the holidays? And if you've lost loved ones on the holidays, then of course, they're very difficult times. I mean, my husband died 13 years ago, for those of you who remember David, and I'm still heartbroken. Um, and heartbroken is a powerful word um, every holiday. And in fact, it's my beautiful son Sammy's birthday today, December 7th. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, there isn't a birthday or Christmas or um, a Father's Day that goes by that I don't think about David. And so, and it's, and it's heartbreaking. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so if, you, if you've lost someone that you really, really love, and I didn't lose him at Christmas time, I lost him in June, but the holidays, it's supposed to be a time of, of fun and excitement and it's so, interesting on social media I put I'll tell you what Christmas is all about one of my favorite movies I and I think if you love this movie you can go yes me too chat right in there is Charlie Brown a uh, Charlie Brown Christmas which I love and it's um and it's like I think it's I Charlie goes could somebody tell me what Christmas is all about and I think it's Linus does he is he who does that you guys it is I'll tell you what Christmas is all about Charlie Brown and he walks out on stage and he says and there was, oh, isn't it beautiful? And they know, and the angel of the Lord came upon them and said, there will be born unto you, Christ, and, and on this night. And, and, and so whether you're Jewish or you're Muslim or you're Christian or you're, you know, atheist, I mean, what Christmas is really about is the birth of Christ. And I was born Christian and I'm also very spiritual. And, but I, every time I watched, every time I watched a Charlie Brown Christmas special, I get emotional because that was some like, well, I don't know, 50 years ago. And, you know, that was the one rare time in my family when we were allowed to drink soda pop and have potato chips and dip, <laughs> remember? Because we were so poor that there were two times we, you know, Christmas Eve or when the Charlie Brown Christmas show was on, I should say. And, and uh, oh, what was the scary show? Wizard of Oz. That's when we got, which is usually on New Year's, <laughs> right? Um, yes, very in innocent time, except for the Wizard of Oz. That show scared the crap out of me, you guys, when those monkeys flew around. Oh, we, oh, oh, did you? I mean, I would go to bed with nightmares. <laughs> I didn't like that show. I liked Dorothy, there's no place like home. And I loved Toto and I loved the lion, but I didn't like those damn monkeys. <laughs> anyway, so someone that I talked to today, I hope, I hope she's on, she was really lovely. Um, and I think she's going to sign up for coaching. And she said, you know, I'm very, very Christian. And my friend said, you, you're going to love Lucinda Bassett, but she cusses. You might not like that. <laughs> I'm really working on it, you guys. I am trying. I've been listening to some other podcasts by some what you would call spiritual leaders <laughs> and thought, you know, thought people. Um, and they all cuss. And I thought, you know, I don't really like it when they cuss. So I'm going to re really work hard on not cussing just for you because I respect you guys so much. If there's anything that I'm doing that offends you, um, I care enough that I don't want to offend you. I want to make you get off of this Zoom call. When you're done, I want you to say, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Lucinda really made me, she gave me, what I, you know what I, I try to do is give you some of my energy. I have a lot of energy <laughs> and it's good energy. I vibrate at a high level of spirituality. And you might say, well, what does that mean? And this is important because it's something that you need to do when you're going through holiday heartbreak. It means that you choose, that this is a choice you make. And I'm just talking to you, buddy. You know who you are over there? <laughs> Peter Pan. Yeah, that was a good one too. 
Um, no, I want to, you guys keep, keep, um, keep giving me this stuff. I'm going to try to answer this girl in a minute, but you know, the thing that's important during this time of the holidays is to stay connected to your higher self and your higher self is God and it is universal energy. And it's, and it's a choice you make every day. And, you know, Denzel Washington, I don't know about you guys. When I'm lying in bed at night, sometimes I will watch YouTube interviews. They're one of my favorite things to watch. And Denzel Washington gave this interview about how tough it is to be an actor, how tough it is to be a good parent, how tough it is to be a loyal spouse, how tough it is to do anything well, because it's so easy not to. And it's so hard to really be the best you you can be, the best version of yourself, especially when you're lonely, especially when you're angry, especially during the holidays, because if you're alone or if you don't have any money or if you feel like no one appreciates you, you know, I mean, or if you lost someone you love. So holiday heartbreak is a real, real problem. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, it seems that this is the season to be married, but there have been many, many reports over the last five years, believe it or not, from Yale and Harvard and a lot of other prominent schools telling us that December through January, uh, and for some will be a couple of the, the hardest several weeks, I guess, of the year. Um, there, while you're sitting there, maybe we're unwrapping or wrapping your Christmas presents, listening to George Winston Christmas music, that's my favorite, or Charlie Brown Christmas album. There are people sitting around with broken hearts and they're weeping and they're depressed. And there's a real problem this time of the year called cardiomyopathy. It's, yeah, you ready for this? You might want to write this down. Broken heart syndrome, cardiomyopathy. And it's, it's very difficult. And the interesting thing is I don't, I don't, I mean, I can't say right now, why do people tend to break up around Christmas? But it's one of the number one times of year when people end relationships. And, and, and I, I based on what I'm seeing, um, what the really sad truth of the matter is, it's hard for both, both parties, you know, the, the man, the woman, or two men or two women, or whatever your partnership is. And, and it does seem like often in a relationship, one is the giver, or one may love the other more. And that's really painful. And if you're the one who is uh, deserted, or you feel left, you're even more heartbroken. And what tends to happen with the one who's left behind is that, especially if you're the woman, they tend to want to fix it. What did I do wrong? Am I not enough? What can I do to make you happy? I don't want to go through the holidays by myself. Could you just give me another chance? And that in itself is, is heartbreaking because, you know, there, there's nothing worse than being dumped um, or feeling that you were dumped. And then, and then you spend the next, you know, month and a half of the holidays all alone. And it, it's really painful. I've done it. Um, I've broken up with people, um, ended relationships, um, whether you're the one that's ending it or you're the one that somebody else ended it. it, it it's, it's, it's really, really heartbreaking. So um, those who are going through that right now, um, I want to talk to you, but I also want to talk to those of you who are fortunate enough to not be going through it, because I want you to think in your life about people that you know and that you love that might be going through this holiday heartbreak thing, because it's so painful. And maybe you could invite them to your house for a gift exchange or a glass of wine. Maybe you could have dinner with them. Maybe you could invite them to your house for a Christmas exchange. Maybe you're going to have a Christmas Eve dinner and you could invite them. Nobody wants to be alone over Christmas. Nobody. Um, so there are certain things you can do when you're going through an actual breakup. And, and I've got some, I made a list and then I used some of the ones that I found on these bright, brilliant sites like Yale. And, um, but, you know, if you're going through a breakup during the holidays, first of all, give yourself permission to be depressed and to feel heartbroken. And you can mourn, you can cry. You can, you can talk to people. That's one of the most important things people like you and I need to do. We need to talk. Call your friends. Call your mom. If you don't have a mom, I don't have a mom. Call your girlfriends. Call your guy friends. Call a therapist. Call me. But talk because you need support. And go ahead, mourn and cry and be upset. But only, only do it for three days. And you say, why three days? Because I want you to get out of it. I want you to get back into your routine. I want you to find your friends to go out and spend time with. You know, I, I you, you guys, you see me wear a lot of hats 
And I, I have this thing hide under my hats. I'd like to sell. In fact, I have a really good friend who's making hats. Maybe I'll try to go into some kind of deal with him because I have this thing about hiding under a hat. And when I'm, you know, if I don't feel pretty or I'm kind of down or I don't have energy, or there's a lot of sun, or if I just feel like it, I hide under my hat. And like tonight, I'm not necessarily hiding, but it just feels like, hmm, like I'm, I'm connected when I have a hat on and I love really pretty hats. And why am I telling you this? Go out and buy yourself a darn hat. If you're really feeling down, buy yourself a holiday gift of a hat. And you might say, I don't look good in hats, but you know what? You don't look good in hats. Everybody looks good in some kind of hat. Maybe you like baseball caps. These, I love this particular type of hat on me. It's fedora, whatever, you know, but there's all kinds of funny hats and cool hats and go buy a hat that will lift your mood. I promise you. And you could also kind of sit like this when you're out with friends and it gives you a place to kind of hide when you're feeling sad and it's okay to feel sad, but just for three days on day four, I want you to get back into your routine and I want you to start writing a journal. This is so important. I hope you guys are taking notes if you're in um, holiday heartbreak. So three days of depression, day four, start journaling about what you're grateful for. Start journaling about who you are as a person, why you are lovable and worthy of great love, why you're going to make this a good holiday and you're going to stay in a place of gratitude about the life that God has blessed you with. And maybe the person that left you or the person that you broke up with, it wasn't the right person and that's okay. There's a million people out there. Listen, David, David's been gone for 12 years. I thought I was going to be single the rest of my life. And I'm 65 and I meet the most amazing, beautiful man. And he is my king. And he is, you know, and I don't say he's a king because he's a king. I say he's a king because he's kind and he's loving. He's at the Apple store right now trying to get me something for my phone because it broke. I mean, he's a beautiful man. And I did what I'm telling you to do. When I broke away from this person, I started journaling about what kind of person do I want to be with? I want a real relationship. I want someone I want to be proud of. I want someone I want to commit to. I want someone who's going to be kind and loving and nurturing to me. I want someone who has children so he understands my children. I mean, I had a list and then you have to be what you want. So if you're looking for a kind, loving, dedicated, sincere person, you need to be a kind, loving, dedicated, and sincere person because you that law of attraction, birds of a feather. You know, if you're someone who's nasty and mean and critical and narcissistic, that's what you're going to attract. And if you're over, if you're over those people, and by the way, you could just be narcissistic at feed, and you could just be a very um, um, passive person, and therefore aggressive people are attracted to you because they know they can be, they know they can, you know, treat treat you badly. So I'm encouraging you now to be someone that you would want to date. <laughs> okay. So start every day after the breakup with gratitude for who you are. Do some journaling at night about, you know what? I'm beautiful. I have a good heart. I come from positive energy. I'm a good mother. Um, I'm fair. I'm loyal. Uh, and, the, and then, you know, you do, you turn around and you highlight all that. And that's what you're looking for in a partner. And you go, oh, that's what I can put on Tinder or Bumble. Because a lot of people don't know how to write profiles. And I will tell you right now, the best profile to write is your own about who you are. And that's what you want to put up as what you're looking for. Because you probably want to find a version of yourself if you feel that you're a good person. All right, this one's so important. Please, whatever you do after a breakup, don't badmouth your ex. It's, 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 I had someone I love very much call me the other day and kind of wanted to tell the story of her life. It was really cha challenging. And I said, why do you want to do that? You're going to hurt a lot of people. The book probably won't even sell because no books sell anymore unless you're super, super, super famous. And then you're going to hurt people and it's not worth it. And when you go off and you badmouth your ex, you're the one that looks bad. I'm telling you, you can say he was a narcissist and he was an asshole and, or she was, you know, selfish and she just, it doesn't matter. You're the one that looks bad. And, and so please resist the temptation to talk unkindly about your ex-partner. In fact, say, hey, you know what? He or she was a great person. I think we brought a lot to each other in that relationship. I'm going to miss him. You know, I'm sorry that it, it ended the way that it did or whatever you want to say. You will not believe people. People will be like, oh, 
especially if the person is known as being difficult and you're sitting there saying, hey, you know what? I, I dated someone. I dated a couple people, frankly, that I could have bad mouthed and said they're difficult. Oh, but I don't do that. I've never done that. I've, I haven't dated that many people. But the few people that I've dated in 12 years, all the relationships ended fairly, they, they ended good. And we're on, still on good terms. I can call any one of them and talk to them right now. And I don't badmouth any of them because here's the take on this, you guys. The universe brings you what you need to learn. And every one of the people that I dated helped me be a better person in some way, helped me define what I don't want maybe in another person, helped me be, maybe feel prettier or younger or maybe me underst understand the importance of being financially responsible because maybe they weren't. I mean, you know, who knows, right? But everybody that I dated you know, God bless the broken road that brought me to what I am with now. That's one of our favorite songs. And I want you to look at this holiday heartbreak as part of your broken road that's going to lead you to, you know, God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. It's by Rascal Flats. I don't know about you, but I love Rascal Flats. In fact, I heard that they're breaking up, which is breaking my heart because I love Rascal Flats. So anyway... Um, resist the temptation to talk unkindly about your ex person. In fact, I encourage you to rise above it and talk kindly about them. And I encourage you to journal about anything, two things that you got from being with them that may have helped you grow or may have helped you be a better person. And you're saying, but why are you telling me to do all this if I have, if I have heartbreak of the holidays? Because I want you to enjoy the holidays. I want you to come away from this holiday energy from a good place. And, and all of this is part of it. And, and being able to step back from a broken relationship and say, God bless the broken road that let me, that's going to lead me straight to the love of my life. But you have to be able to define the love of your life. So practice that. Practice defining who you want to meet, what kind of person you want to meet. Practice writing your port, your, I want to say portfolio, your description of the person you want to meet, the potential for your next partnership. And go ahead and go on several of these dating sites. Um, practice image replacement. By that, I mean, you know, start focusing on, on your image. Like what image do you want to put out there to the world? Is it one of a depressed, sad, brokenhearted person that someone left or it isn't capable of intimacy? Or is it an, an image of someone who came out of a relationship and is ready to move, on, to move on to another healthy relationship? Someone who looks good and takes care of themselves. Brush your teeth once in a while. Get your hair done. <laughs> Do your nails. I mean, you know, come on. Um, part of feeling good is looking good. And, you know, I just saw Rita Murano, for those of you who remember her. She's 90 years old. She was on Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon. I, I like them both. And she's 90. You're about to turn 90. And she's back on Broadway. Um, and I'm so blown away. She looks incredible. And that gives someone like me motivation because I think, wow. You know, if I can look like that at 90, then I'm not scared to turn 90. If I can be on Broadway, you know, I mean, there's so many things we can do at any age. So stay motivated, put your best front forward. Another thing you might want to do is stay off social media for a week or two or a day or two. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm addicted to it myself, my, but I tend to look at, I tend to, I love YouTube. I love to watch my favorite thing to do. Like some people love to watch TV series. I love to watch YouTube interviews with Dan Rather, like he does, he does the most intimate interviews like with Carly Simon and um, you know, uh, Al Pacino. I mean, they're, they're so intimate and they're so real. And you hear about these people like Sting and how he went through depression and, and you, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, it's so nice for me, Lady Gaga and what she's been through. I mean, she was almost, I think she was kind of raped uh, at the beginning of her musical career. I, I had no idea. I mean, you learn these things and you realize you're not the only one who goes through struggles. So maybe stay off Facebook and Instagram uh, because, and you're saying, why? Because people tend to post things about themselves when they're happy and they're smiling and life looks perfect and life isn't perfect. In fact, um, for most people, people also post things about themselves when they're struggling with cancer or they need help or support. I, I love that, that people ask for that. I tend to just keep it pretty simple. I try not to post a lot about my personal life. Mine's mostly about the work I do. Um, but I posted Sammy and wish Sammy happy birthday today. 
But, you know, if you're someone who's going through holiday heartbreak and you're seeing your all your friends gathered around the tree, hugging their loved ones, saying, oh, this is my sweetie pie. This is our 30th anniversary. That might be heartbreaking to you. And that's OK. And instead of envying them, ask yourself, how can I emulate? How can I look for that in someone that I want to be with? Be careful about your expectations when you meet someone new. Let's say you go online and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know what? That guy looks really good or that girl looks really good. But think back to the relationship that you just came out of. You don't want to repeat that. So, you know, you might journal about, you know, the person I was just with was kind of verbally abusive and self-absorbed. They weren't really kind. They weren't really a giver. I don't want to repeat that. And by the way, you don't have to share that with anybody else, okay? That's your own information so that when you go setting your heights and sights on someone else, um, think back on the previous relationship and, 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 and change your expectations. Jason, hey, about what kind of person you want to be with based on the previous relationship and what was lacking or what was unhealthy. And be um, suspicious of anybody that uh, is, gives you too much public attention initially. You know, I, I, I really love the dating sites. Be very wary. I will tell you right now, everybody that's single right now is out kind of on the dating sites. And so talk to someone on the phone three or four times. Never, you know, go meet, let, don't let, let, let someone come to your home or pick you up. Go meet them for a coffee or a glass of wine. Someone's got their mic on. They got to shut it off. I think it's you, Jason, baby. It's nice to see you. Nice to hear you, though. Anyway, um, so, you know, don't, don't be so quick to jump into something. Take your time getting to know someone by talking to them several times on the phone. Go ahead and ask them where they live. Go ahead and ask them what they do for a living. Ask them if they have children. Ask them what they enjoy. Ask them how much they drink. Ask them if they smoke. Ask them if they do drugs. You can ask all that. And if they're like, I don't want to answer any of that. Guess what? Move on. One thing you need to know is there are 9 million people in the world and you don't need to settle anymore. I encourage you to get out there. I ensure, I encourage you to connect. If you're fortunate enough to be invited to parties, flirt a little bit. Be the energy that people are attracted to. Oh, you had a holiday breakup. Okay, that really sucks. But you know what? It's an open door. It's an open window. It's an opportunity for maybe you to meet Mr. or Miss or Mrs. or whatever. Right. I know. I did it. I went through four months, of five months of being on my own, dancing with my dogs, really heartbroken, thinking I'm going to be alone the rest of my life. Lucinda, I thought the same thing. And lo and behold, I will tell you this, you guys, if you are in the middle of a, a heartbreak, a holiday breakup, know that the best is yet to come. Know that when, because here's the next thing, guard against holding on. Let go. The freedom, the peace it's in the let go. If someone doesn't want you, you certainly <laughs> I'm not sure money, maybe Jason. Uh, you know, if somebody doesn't want you, let go. Just let go. Don't badmouth them. Don't treat them badly. Move on. You have too much to offer. How do I know that? Because you're on this podcast or this Zoom with me right now. What does that mean? That means you want to be a better version of you. That means you're open to input, and that's what I'm good at. So you guys got to shut your mic off. Maybe I can do it. Um, I, I try to do it. But anyway, okay. So the other thing I want to encourage you to do is hug, reach out. When you enter a party or you're with friends, you know, and they've been vaccinated or you know they're safe, you know, hugs are valuable. Research has shown that hugging someone actually releases endorphins in your body. It, make, it calms you down. It makes you feel loved. Hug your grandchildren, hug your children, uh, hug your sister, hug your brother, hug, hug your mom. Um, it's like sunshine. It's contagious and it feels really good. Put a mask on if you feel you need to do that. If, if they're not vaccinated, but hug. A little bit of hugs go a long way. Make plans with friends who are upbeat and are positive right now. Don't hang out with, with negative people. Um, in fact, I would encourage you, if you've been through holiday heartbreak, break the ties with the people that hung out with your ex that are negative, you know, that, and, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. If, if, if you were in a relationship and you had couple friends, it's hard to break those ties. But if they're really best friends with him or her, 
let them go for a while through the holidays. Let your ex enjoy their company. You go hang out with your people because, you know, it'll just prolong the pain. You might see your ex out with someone else. And by the way, don't go running out to a party where you know your ex is with somebody you met on Match.com because you don't want to hurt them. You know, I, I, what goes around comes around and you want to surround yourself with, self with positive energy. The other thing you can do if you're going through holiday heartbreak, which is it's, 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 it's paramount, is to become a volunteer. And you said that, Ray, but that's so true. In any place and in any way, do something during the holidays. Go sue for food at the food bank. Take a neighbor a Christmas present. You know, take somebody out to see a Christmas carol. Do something for the holidays because to for somebody else because then you stop focusing on yourself. Make some homemade gifts. Like people love homemade cookies. People love homemade cake. People people love homemade. I love homemade anything. You know, somebody my um, somebody made me a homemade candle. It was one of the coolest things I've ever received. My a fiance's sister-in-law actually made him a homemade scarf. So beautiful. So, you know, not that you need to make a scarf, but you know, um, yes, thank you. That is what Christmas is all about. And, and, and really, you know, what Christmas is all about is, and, and bringing me to the next um, segment here of the things you can do to heal holiday heartbreak is, is embracing the energy of the holiday you know, being, putting out good energy, being a giver, um, saying, you know, hello and welcoming people and happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah has just ended, but, you know, anything you can say that points out that you love people, that you are coming from a good energy space. Um, and like I said, go serve food, um, go give your time to anyone, anything, anywhere um, to pass out food or, or help people that are in need. Um, the other thing you should do, it, because that will just make you feel better and, and good energy is contagious. The other thing you really need to do is exercise because um, exercise, and, and I'm talking about cardio, like get a treadmill, get on a treadmill, get out and walk the dog, walk with a girlfriend, go to the gym, whatever you can do. You know, if you ski, go skiing, get out and do something physical because it's better for you than sitting with a therapist. And then last, and this is like one of the most important thing, new things you can do if you're experience, experiencing holiday heartbreak is make the decision that you're going to rebound, okay? I don't care who this person was. You know, maybe they were the best looking person and they took you all over the world. Or maybe they were really loving and fun and they just felt like you weren't the match for them. Who knows, right? But, but if, if, if it wasn't meant to be, move on. Make the decision to move on. Make the decision to get um, on with your life and rebound in the form of go out, go out on dating sites, get out and take dates, uh, go, you know, go get into a new fun dating experience with someone. Believe it or not, it says right here, um, that's what the doctor ordered. It says Brumbaugh and Farley determined from two studies there may be a serious benefit in rebound love. So keep yourself open to infatuation, to love at first sight. I, I love love at first sight. You know, those people that say, oh, you were in a relationship for five years. You really need to take your time. You, I hate people that say, you need to get really comfortable being by yourself first. I don't believe that shit, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. <laughs> sorry. But I'm a relationship person. I'm a people person. I love being in love. I like having a partner. I don't like sitting around by myself. I'm not that kind of person. And if you're not either, that's okay. Go out, get on a dating site. There's a million of them. Write a beautiful um, you know, bio for yourself and then talk about what you want. I actually said on mine, you know, I said, if you're living in your daughter's apartment or you live with your mother, don't bother. I'm going to be too much for you. I did say that. I said, independent, loving, giving, kind woman, mother, professional, and I'm looking for the same. And I described the guy and I said, if you live with your, in your daughter's apartment or you live with your mother, you know, uh, I'm probably not, I'm, I'm probably too much for you. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, if your mother lives with you and you're taking care of her, but you know, you, you kind of get the vibe in my profile um, that this is a strong, independent woman, and she's looking for the same in a man. And it, it, you'll, 
really be surprised how many people won't call you, <laughs> you know, because you're intimidating them. And, you know, at first I thought, gee, I don't want to intimidate people. And then I thought, yes, I do. I do want to intimidate people. I don't want somebody I'm going to intimidate. Do you? I mean, and, you know, maybe you like to go out and hike and maybe you like to sit and watch, you know, um, series television. And maybe you're really into sports and maybe you, you know, don't like to dress up. And you need what you want. You need who you are. But maybe on the other hand, maybe you're into all those things. Maybe you're someone who likes to sit around and read books and watch CNN or Fox News and it's hard for you to get out and get motivated. Maybe what you're looking for is someone who can bring a spark to your life, someone that's going to make you get out and dance, someone that's going to be playful and full of energy and love to talk because you're just the opposite. So sometimes opposites attract, but you have to know what you want. And once you start journaling the way I'm telling you, you're going to figure out what you want and you're going to go into the holidays with open doors, open windows, and an open mind. And you may just manifest the new holiday love of your life. And you may, may be spending New Year's with a brand new person that makes you so happy that you cannot even believe you met them. But it all starts right now with you making the decision that you're gonna make the decision to be happy and to move forward and to open your heart. If you would have told me, Four years ago, when I sold a house that I loved and moved away from the lake into the city and I hated it there and moved back out in the country and got hit by a truck, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, why did all this happen to me? Why did I leave the house that I love? Blah, blah, blah. Well, if I wouldn't have gone through all of that. I wouldn't have met Mr. Wright. And so here I am. And I'm sitting here and like, listen, life isn't perfect for me. And life isn't perfect for my family. Like I said, I don't have any family. I've lost all my brothers and sisters and my mom and dad, if you're lucky enough to have siblings, then be grateful. If you're lucky enough to have a parent or parents that are alive, be grateful, be forgiving, stand in gratitude and enjoy the holidays, you know, but I don't have a perfect life, but I have a good life and I'm healthy at 65 years old. And I get to be here for you guys, which really make, make, makes me feel that I'm, you know, worthy and bringing something of value to the world. And that's also something you need to do. Like, what can you do to make the world a better place? And remember, your kids are watching. So whatever you do, if you can take your kids out to help feed the homeless or pass out Christmas presents, there's this really cool place in Santa Monica that every year they give presents and turkeys to people at the holidays. And we always took the kids and we went and did that at the airport hangar. You know, it was, it, you know, your kids are watching you. And, and if you're sitting around being selfish or bawling and depressed, they're going to say, wow, that's what you're supposed to do at the holidays. Oh, well, that sucks. And they're not going to want to be with you. So be someone everyone else wants to be around. All right, you guys, we're going to breathe. So I hope you'll join me for this breath session. I love all of you. Um, yes, on one of these Zoom calls, you should all wear a hat. I love that idea, Joe. That's fabulous. <laughs> I am the hat queen. I don't know why, but um, I just love that song. You're the dancing queen out of the only 17. I'll be the hat queen, okay? Anyway. That you are a queen if you're, you know, I'm, I am a queen. And what's a queen? A queen is a person that stands in their power and is willing to take on the kingdom and, and also is willing to respect everybody as equals uh, and, and, and is willing to take the responsibility of helping a community to thrive. And so I guess in that way, I consider myself a queen and I'm willing to take that responsibility. So I'm glad to be here. So we're going to breathe. So you're going to sit back and you're going to breathe in through your mouth to the count of three and then slow breath out. I'm telling you guys, if you want to call me um, and do coaching or breath work, I'm available. I'm going to give you Darla's number um, and you can call Darla to set a free session with me to do a 10 minute call to see if you might be a good candidate. Her number is 419-350-7499. After the first of the year, we're going to start doing groups again. So there'll be eight to 10 people in a group on Zoom. They're so much fun and they fell up really fast. So if you're interested in group sessions, if you want to do some breath work, if you want to do just personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, call that number and, um, and we can do a free call to see if that might be something you're interested in. All right. I'm going to put on one of my favorite breath work songs. And, and you're like, what is breath work? Well, breath work, transformational breath, it's a complete intense breathing experience where you breathe through your mouth only and you fully oxygenate your body, your blood cells, and your brain. 
And when you do that, you on the exhale, you exhale toxins. On the inhale, you're inhaling purity. And you don't need to be afraid to breathe. Breath is life. And people say, oh, breath work's been around forever. Not this type of breath work. And hopefully we'll be doing breath, um, breath weekend retreats again in uh, like April or May once this virus has calmed down. And by the way, this new variant, uh, it's believed isn't going to be anywhere near as deadly or harmful. It, 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 it is more infectious, but it's people are getting very mildly sick. So hopefully we're going to get back to normal and we're going to get beyond this. Okay. So go into the holidays, optimistic and happy and let's breathe. All right. Let me find one of my favorite songs for you guys, because you guys are so special. So I want you to get in position, which means I love breath music. And for those of you who don't know what breath music is, I encourage you to join my Zoom calls every other Tuesday night. And I also want you to go on my podcast, Let Go of Lucinda, and breathe. But until then, Google Transformational Breath, because that's where I became highly certified they do the best breath work in the world. And also um, download Jennifer Barazan radio, B-E-R-A-Z-A-N radio, because that's where I get most of my breath music. Okay, so this song is Julie Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, follow my voice. All right, so we're gonna start breathing. Breathe into your mouth, slow breath out, quick breath out actually. Slow breath into your mouth to the count of three and then a short breath out. So it's. Keep breathing, close your eyes. I call upon the I am presence to now manifest the performance of the highest possibilities for the perfect breath session for every client here tonight as we move into these beautiful holidays under the grace of God. Perfect alignment, perfect acceptance of all information that they are going to hear or see in this breath session tonight. I am divine. I am safe. I am always cared for. I am loved and loving. I am perfect harmony. I am a good person. I am full of positive love and intention. I am as God created me. Masters of light and angelic forces and the great I am. I call upon your guidance, assistance, and support for every client here tonight. Show them any messages or information they need to hear. If anyone is in heartbreak for the holidays, please open their heart and open their eyes to the potential and possibility for a new love a new beginning, maybe the best that's ever been. I invite you to embrace your own beautiful universal energy. The vibration throughout your body, from your head to your toes, all that is good, health, abundance, kindness, energy, breathing out love, forgiveness, non-judgment, and joy, joy to the world. That's what Christmas is all about, loving, forgiving, embracing. Do you feel it, this beautiful energy? It's your soul, it's your life, it's your light, and it's your gift. And that's what Christmas is all about. I hope you'll stay in this incredibly beautiful, 
spiritual space you're in right now. Hold space for your children. Hold space for the sister you're angry at. Hold space for the lover that let you go or that you let go of. Hold space. Hold space for your heart. Open your mind, open your soul. The best is yet to come. Go make it a great week to be alive, to be healthy, stay in gratitude, and I love you all, and I'll see you two weeks from today.